what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, I'm back again, you know. It's another Friday, so we got to kick out something out there positive, you know. Something for y'all to think about over the weekend. And then something for y'all to think about as you head in the next week, whenever you get a chance to watch it. And oh yeah, thanks to you guys that did watch the last video, that shared it, you know, that subscribed. I greatly appreciate it, man. I just hope that you guys, you know, are taking something from it, learning something from it, you know, and are growing, you know, with me as I grow. But uh, today, man, it won't be a long one at all, man. This is just something that I've been, you know, thinking about, you know, for a few days. But uh, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it's not a lot of content to it. But it's definitely something for you to think about, you know. So today's topic is going to be. Were you born or raised of survival or love? And also, how are you living? Are you living off survival or love? So, give a second to think about that. Ask yourself, you know, because, uh, I don't know, man. I've been getting a lot of, you know, people hitting me up and stuff, you know, asking me about uh, relationship stuff, man, you know, or some advice and stuff like that, you know, or as to why, you know, my insight as to why, you know, I think that, you know, younger, younger people, you know, aren't being married or staying married or their relationships, you know, their dating isn't, uh, I guess, flourishing, you know. So I'm going to go ahead, you know, get right on into it because I got some other prior engagements today that I got to, you know, jump jump into after this so yeah you definitely gotta get it rolling but uh yeah so here's here's my take man first of all you know i can't really judge anybody's relationship you know because it says let he who has no sin cast the first stone so not judging anybody at all but the problem i guess i'm seeing you know with a lot of the uh Younger people, you know, is that uh, their parents, you know, might have not, might have not been there. They might have not had a two-parent household, you know, so they might have not seen what you know, love and affection, you know, and all those good things look like. You know, they might have seen it's seven a.m. and I'm going to school, and now my parents are going to work, and we'll see them again, you know, at five or six in the afternoon, you know, and it leaves the kids pretty much, you know, to raise themselves or to uh, be raised, I guess, through the school system, you know, and through their peers, you know. And um, also have to consider the fact that, you know, most homes these days are in dual parent homes. They're usually single mothers and sometimes single fathers whether there are step parents involved. So the conventional, you know, homes that we might have seen in the 60s, 70s, and maybe even the 50s, you know, we don't see those homes anymore. So you don't have kids being raised off on um, uh, love or compassion and seeing those things that, you know, some of the older people had seen that had dual parents in their homes. And it it affects it affects all people differently, you know. Like most of the time, most people are going to look towards their elders in their family or their parents as to what the definition of love is and how it should how it should be displayed. But when that's not there, then you're operating off survival. We've seen kids, like I said, that don't get to see their mom or their dad because they have to be at work 24 seven or they have to work 70 hours a week or 40 hours a week full time. And they still have other things they have to handle outside of work. And that pretty much just leaves a big gap, a big void in the family. And furthermore, we begin to see that kids, you know, when they get older, they can't really show love or they can't find affection or they don't know, you know, what love looks like. They only know, I need to go pay my bills. I got to go do this. 
or I need to be with this kind of person so, you know, I can get ahead or I can survive. And the other person might have come from a home that had a mom, a dad, or that had some family members that they, you know, were close with, that they were able to see, you know, happy marriages or good, long lasting relationships, you know. So now you have these people coming together, you know, one from a background that came from survival and another who came from love. And it's just a big clash, you know, a person who has always seen love, and who knows love is going to want to be loved and shown affection and covered in all the kissy kisses and hugs and all those things, you know, but a person who came from survival, their way of showing you love is I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to make sure you're good. I'm going to make sure you know all the basic necessities are met. You can just, you know, do what you got to do or you can contribute as you may. But to that other person who comes from love, they don't, they don't, they don't care about the hustle or they don't care, you know, about what you can do to them. You know, they care more about the things that can't be seen, such as love. You know, we all know that money and materialistic things can be seen, but love, you know, is often, you know, a, a felt thing. But we have to, you know, get in a place, I guess, where uh, we begin to help the kids, you know, or help this uh, epidemic, you know. Even whereas we see, man, where now the cost of living is so high, man, and so expensive that most people aren't spending very much time at home. They're spending a lot more time at work, and the kids are spending a lot more time alone. And that's why we see a lot of, you know, kids just all over social media wilding out, going crazy. And we see some of the uh, teachers having to fight these kids and stuff like that because some of these kids are living like adults already, you know, even in a young age because they have to get out here and provide for themselves too. And they have to, you know, help take care of a home and help, you know, defend, you know, their siblings or whatever the case may be. But, you know, that that ultimately, you know, is going to affect their future. And like I said, when it comes to those building of relationships and those long, those long term meaningful relationships, you know, they, they see some problems, you know, and you'll always see some problems in your relationships, you know. Especially if you have two different people who come from two different lifestyles, you know, or that was grown up in two different types of families, you know. We um, see in our community a lot of a lot of pain and a lot of hurt, you know. A lot of the older people, I guess I should say maybe the 70s, you know, grew up off the Cosby show. Even the Cosby show showed, you know, a family. They showed love. They showed compassion. Now we turn on the TVs. We don't really see families on TV anymore. We see maybe a blended family. Maybe we see, you know, some kids on there who are just, you know, out running the streets or going wild, you know. And this could be, you know, what big America wants for, you know, us anyway as a people. But, you know, it's not right, you know, because once you take away love, you know, what is there left? What is there left to give, you know? We see, you know, morals and values, you know, dropping tremendously on the TVs, you know. Back in the day, you once would have seen, you know, a married couple laying in the bed with the clothes on, you know, and people probably would have told you to close your eyes, you know. Now we see, you know, people having, you know, full out sex naked on the TV, you know, and nobody even says anything or nobody even, you know, cares, you know, because... The whole, the whole morals and ethics, you know, in America have completely dropped, you know. And not to get too, too far off topic, you know, but this, everything that they put out there, you know, it always comes back to us tenfold. You know, even with the, like I said, the TV shows, man, they put this love and hip hop and all these things out there for people to watch, you know, but they're integrating it in the spirit. A lot of these shows, what do they have? Cheating, scandals, uh, babies being made while being married with other people. Everything that we used to frown upon, now we are taking it all in and just letting it just become a part of us, you know. And nobody's speaking up. Nobody's telling people not to watch it, you know. 
And even the music, man, the music, you know, it doesn't really promote love. So where are where are these where do you expect people to get love from or learn love from? You know, we can we can say, all right, we need to get them in the churches or we need to get, you know, the pastors and stuff to go out and talk to the people. That could be true. But guess what? The pastors are pretty, pretty occupied these days doing other things, you know, as far as, you know, taking in immigrants or trying to just feed communities or do jobs that senators and mayors and other people should be doing, you know, far as taking care of the communities. But that's neither here nor there because we're definitely not going to get political. But we definitely have to look at, you know, the tides in the world, the way the world tide is turning. You know, there's a there's a lot of things, you know, I guess, hidden agendas in this world, you know, that are pretty much just going forth and going in effect, you know, to the point to where people have to begin to analyze themselves and look at themselves and see like, all right, am I so, am I showing love? Am I sowing love? Or am I just reacting off survival? You know, because a lot of times we base our friends off who can help us, who knows this, who knows that. And a lot of more of the times we're greedy and we're selfish. We're thinking about, man, I had that opportunity or man, if I was that person, you know, I'd do this, I'd do that. You're not that person. Everybody has a different destiny. Everybody's life, you know, is going to go accordingly or it's going to, it's going to, it's going to go the way that it needs to go. Is what I'm trying to say. But we have to begin to find, you know, that common ground between love and survival. We have to, we have to bring them together on one accord. We can't just operate in one realm and forget about the other because that's the problem with the world now. Too much survival, not enough love. And we begin to have babies and put these kids out here. And it's an ever-repeating cycle, man. And we wonder why the world's getting crazier and crazier. There's no love. They're taking the love away from us, you know. Love has been, you know, took it, you know, completely away from everything that we once knew and once Thought was the right thing, you know. It seems to be a uh, frowned upon these days to ask another person, you know, how you doing or a simple smile or a wave, you know, especially in the black community, man. We see so much self-hate, it's not even funny to the point where it's been times when I take my kid to school or, you know, I'm just out and about in the community. I see another brother or another, you know, person, you know. And I say, hey, how you doing or something like that, you know, and it's like they just keep walking or feel like, you know, man, I'm a female and this man can't say, hey, how you doing or smile at me because he must be trying to, you know, talk to me or get at me or something like that. And that's completely not the case. Just people have gotten so far out of morals and common courtesy and customs, you know, we always want to think about us. What about, you know. It could be somebody just trying to speak and say, hey, how you doing? I hope you have a good day today, you know. But we'll translate over to, man, that, that lady or that guy must have really liked me or they must have really wanted to get to know me or something like that. Also, on a personal level. No, it's not always that, you know. But we have to find our way back to, you know, standing for something having some customs, having some morals, having some thoughts, having some beliefs. You know, we can't let politics, media, social media, VH1, BET, ESPN, and all these major corporations sway and determine the people that we're going to become. At the end of the day, we're individuals. You know, you have a brain of your own and a thought process of your own. Just because you were raised off survival, doesn't mean that you have to live your whole life in survival mode or that you have to pass that down to your children. You can easily tell yourself daily, I need to show acts of kindness. I need to show love. I don't need to think about myself in these moments. I need to practice thinking about others. And that is the gateway to freedom. And that's the start of getting your family back on track, getting your life back on track, finding some peace throughout the storm. Because without love, what are we? 
with nothing, you know? And I apologize that this topic was super short, you know? But it's something just for you guys to think about, you know? How are you living? Are you showing those acts of kindness and love, you know? And if you can't find your love life or if your love life's not working, what what are you operating out of? What do you think about other people? Do you look at other people as a come up? Do you look at other people as for what can they do for you instead of what can you do for them? You know, and also if you have kids, you know, what am I displaying around my kids? Am I displaying love, kindness and affection? You know, I always say love, peace and happiness. Anybody who, you know, talks to me on the regular or reaches out, man, that's my that's always my end quote, man, or end little goal. Love, peace and happiness. Because, man, I feel like that's what the world needs, you know. And nobody talks about that, though. Everybody's, you know, quick to talk about all these other things that's going on. and Some of the issues, you know, with the community and stuff like that. But, like I said, the, the biggest thing is self-hate, man, and no love. We got to stop hating one another, man. We got to start, you know, reflecting, you know, our, you know, love inside of us on the others. You know, we can't we can't waste any more time, you know, sitting around trying to figure out or trying to decide, you know, man, I don't know if I want this relationship. I don't know if I want that one, you know, because of that person is like this or they don't have this. They don't have that. You know, the biggest thing a person can offer you is love. That's the biggest sacrifice, you know, love and appreciation, man. You know, for me, man, it's been a, it's, it was a great week this week, man. Matter of fact. Just to give you all a, a little update on my life or whatever, on my stories, you know. But uh, my dad, man, he actually made it down here, you know, for the first time, you know, he made it out to where I live at, man. And it was it was a, it was a great feeling, man. You know, it was a feeling like never before, man, because I know that it's hard being a man, you know, like a man. That's that's a whole different animal, you know. It's so much competition, so much hurt. So much, you know, of just trying to be better than the man that created you and trying to make sure that you leave behind a great legacy to the point, man, where a man's brain almost never stops working, man. That's why you see so many men that are alcoholics, stressed out, cheaters, drug addicts, because, man, they, they have to find some kind of escape, man, to get out of their own heads because a man's brain never stops working, man. I know you women might feel like, man, men don't think, man. They don't have a brain on their shoulders. They just go out and act off of emotions and just make rash, poor decisions. That could be true for some men. You know, like I said, it's hard, man. You know, we have to leave families and, you know, we have to really, you know, do a lot of extra things, man, that women might not have to do. Not to be sexist, you know, because women, I, I greatly appreciate all my women out there, you know. I know you guys are doing great things on the home building front and you guys are out there, you know, in the world becoming, you know, the things that they said you guys couldn't become, you know, years ago. You guys have surpassed it and became more. But the role of a man, man, it's, it's huge. So I just told my dad, man, I appreciate him coming, man. I was thankful for him coming, you know, because, you know, man, it's it's not every day, you know, that a man takes out of time. Uh, takes out his time, you know, to come see another man, you know, miles and miles and miles away, you know, just to fellowship, to groom him, you know, and just to spend some some quality time with him, you know, whether it be for work reasons that uh, another man comes or whether it be just for leisure reasons, just to visit, you know, another man should always appreciate that, you know, especially if it's, you know, a younger man or I should say an older man, you know, coming to put some time in with a younger man because, you know, Young men, we still are learning, you know, and the older men, they have some knowledge that they can pass down already, you know, and that is really, you know, I guess the turning point for a lot of things, you know, because for my dad, you know, I know he lived in Florida for quite some time, you know, and he had a pretty good life, a good life, you know, my my dad, man, he's done a lot of good things, man, you know, he... He's up there, man, with the men, you know, that uh, are successful. You know, I'm not going to tell his business. I'm not going to tell what he does or anything like that. But, yeah, he's he's successful. You know, he's doing his thing. And uh, 
his dad, man, you know, I don't I don't know if his dad ever made it to, you know, see him or to come down to where, you know, he lives or where, you know, he resided at, you know, that I was aware of. But, you know, he made it a thing to come and see me. That could have easily been, you know, just another generational curse or something along those lines or where, you know, it just would have continued down to where, you know, the father didn't, you know, travel to see the son or the father didn't put in an effort, you know, to teach the son or come around, you know, but my pops did that for me. So now, you know, it's more like, man, no matter where my son lives, he can live in, you know, Greece, he can live in Egypt, he can live in Ethiopia, wherever he's at, man, you know, I got to get there to go see him, you know, because it wouldn't be right, you know, and it's just like, man, I, I appreciate the smallest things in life, man, I don't, I don't think too much about the big, big stuff, man. The smallest things make me happy, man. Because I know we're here, man, and one day we're going to be gone, you know. And it, we don't control when we're going to be gone, man. So it's no need to get stressed out on the big things that we don't have or the things that we want that haven't occurred yet. You know, I've learned, man, just stay, stay consistent and stay patient, you know. And I never really, you know, thought about, like, man, my dad, you know, hadn't made it down here yet or anything like that or. My mom hadn't made it down here yet or any of my family members hadn't, you know, came around too much, man. Because I stay busy, man, you know, with a lot of stuff, a lot of different projects. And on top of that, you know, I live pretty far away from, you know, everybody and everything that I, you know, grew up around, you know. So I don't expect people to make too, too much sacrifices, you know. And I usually get over there, you know, to see my family, you know, at least maybe twice a year, maybe three, if it's a good year. But I'll say all in that and all to say, man, you know that life gets better with time, man, you know, and just him just showing me that love, man. It just showed me that, you know, man, you don't have to operate in survival, man. You can operate in love, man. You can you can make sacrifices. You can get out here, you know, and be the best person you really best person you really can be, you know, or the person that you want to be, you know, and. Nothing can stop you, you know. I like to uh, think of myself as like a fierce competitor anyway, you know. I always say, man, like, man, this this family, you know, that I'm in right now, you know, it's a good family. It's a great family. It's a lot of uh, lineage and a lot of history in this family, you know. But sometimes we, we block ourselves, you know. Because of, you know, this whole thing of not showing love or not sowing these acts of kindness or love, you know? And I guess the biggest thing I can say is, you know, for everybody is, man, that, you know, love breeds love, man. You know, everything produces out its own kind. So if you continuously showing love and sowing those seeds, you know, of uh, happiness and peace, Man, that's what it continuously come back to you, you know. But I'm going to wrap this one up, man. I appreciate y'all for kicking it with me. I appreciate y'all for watching. You know, I hope today, you know, that something was said or something might have went through your ears, you know, that might help you in the future or might help you through your situation right now, you know. And if you're in a relationship and you're in a tough spot, you know, think about your position. Think about how you was raised. Think about, did you see love? Think about, you know, are there serious long-term relationships in your family? Are you seeing these things? And if you didn't see these things, you can change that. Start showing love. Start sowing love on a daily. You know, you don't have to, you know, live in the shackles of, you know, the past. As I said in the last video, you know, in the five things to consider video, let go of the past, you know, and you are what you eat. So if you if you're sitting here, you know, watching VH1 Love and Hip Hop all day, you know, and you're just seeing, you know, broken marriages and couples that are dysfunctional. And this is what you're taking into your mind, into your body and your spirit all day, every day. Then you're going to start to produce those things because everything produces out its own kind. So when you take these things in, they're going to come out and you're going to produce those things. So change your mindset change your life by changing your mindset easily you know but it starts with one thing and one day at a time you know you can't 
you can't jump in the ocean and drink all the water out of the ocean. You know, it's impossible. And you can't, you know, wake up overnight, you know, and correct all the bad mistakes or everything that you've done wrong in your life. You can't. It's pretty much better just to let go of the past and just start over, creating all things new within your heart, you know. But like I said, man, thanks, man. I really appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for viewing. You know, if there's any other topics or anything, you know, that you guys want to talk about, man, or you want to hear about, you know, feel free to ask, man. Just write it in my little message. Just thing under the under the videos, man. And continue to like, share, and subscribe, man. What you need, man. It's definitely something out there for everybody, you know. And I appreciate it, man. One love. Love, peace, and happiness. It's your boy checking out, man. Chicka chicka!